I made a bloody bill we cover this video. Okay, this is a really important message, guys, and um, it's something that, you know, you should be really thinking about and to make sure you know where you are in Him, where you're standing, how strong your, your faith is, that we do not waver. Um, I just saw a TV program, and uh, I can't remember the name of it, but there was a young girl sitting there, and all I wasn't lo really looking at the TV at the time. I was looking downwards, and... Uh, I was just listening and I heard this woman say, this young woman say, I can't believe I'm going to eat myself. And this wasn't a comedy or it wasn't a, a thriller, it wasn't a science fiction movie, this was a reality show. And uh, so when I heard that, I, I mean I couldn't look, I didn't see it, um, but I believe that she boiled it, she fried it, and she ate it. So. Again, here we are. We, we we need to be standing in our faith. We need to know who we are in Him, and we need to know for sure and 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 without waver that we are protected from this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get right into the the scriptures here, and uh, I just pray, like I say, the message here is to know thyself and uh, to know where you are and where you are in your faith and how strong you are. Okay. All right. So. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach the tiding unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I just did a, a video on meekness and boldness and, and the strength in meekness. And, um, it's, you know, for an example, one of them would be, would be Moses going up against Pharaoh. Um, so... Yeah, there. Yeah, I. It's not weakness at all. And as far as brokenhearted, I really believe that God has to break our hearts in order for Him to work with us. Because before He broke our hearts, we were full of pride, and envy, and and whatever that may have been on your part. But were you calling on Him? Were you talking to Him every day? Were you, you know? And I believe the answer would be no to that because we get too comfortable in our lifestyles. We get too comfortable in ourselves knowing, feeling that we're the ones that are accomplishing what, what it is that's before us. When in reality, it's our Father Abba who's doing this and who's who's straightening our, our, our path. And He's the one that planned everything before us. So we really are just walking the walk and uh, living in faith um, because it was, it was all Him. It is all Him, and He's always before us. So I believe, you know, with Him breaking our hearts, it's just to get us back on, on track because we were drifting away from Him, okay? So it's a good thing. It really is a good thing. Now, uh, being the prisoner of the mind, um, when I went through my uh, tribulations and, and, and such, when I was younger, um, when I was dealing with incest and, and molestation and rapes and, and uh, mental abuse, the thing is here that um, when I started to really look at it, now the world's telling you that, um, oh, it's, it's PTSD, it's this, and, and you need therapy, you need to take this pill and that pill. And uh, that, that was so far away from me, you know. So when things would happen, like when um, I would be triggered, I would be triggered by, you know, arrogance. I would be, I would be threatened by anything that uh, was up against me. And there was a lot of times where um, I would have people come up to me and say, oh, you know, you don't have anything intelligent to say, or you, you know, would you call me an SLUT at the age of seven or you know um, so there was a lot of you know triggers that went along with insecurities that I had and uh, but the more I looked at it and the more spirit walked me through it he, he was showing me the dark hearts he was showing me the worldly hearts of these people that were very aggressive towards me and this was not PTSD this was something that I needed to be really diving into to find out what was triggering me, why it was triggering me, and if it was me or if it was them. And so these were the things that I would be asking myself. I wouldn't go outside of myself. I'd ask within. And I had kept that communication going with the Holy Spirit where he would show me and say, well, this is a dark heart. 
I could sit there and watch a movie with three people, and I'll tell you, I'll come out with a completely different scenario than the, the other three that were watching it, because the spirit talks to me through the movies. You know, dude, look at this, look at that, look at the, this way, what about this way? You know, so I was, I'm constantly being uh, talked to when it comes to the Holy Spirit. So, uh, this prison that I was carrying with these emotions, it was like a chain. And right up into my adulthood, you know, I was going through all of these uh, back uh, flashes, um, you know, this sort of thing. And so one day, uh, that was it for me. Um, it was in the year 2012. It was in the summer of 2012. And things were so bad. And everybody was asking me to do the material, worldly things. And I knew that there was absolutely nothing I could do about that. There was no way that I was going to adapt myself to this world. There was just absolutely no way that I hated this world and it hated me, you know. So um, that's when, you know, one day I stood there and I just went up and I said, Jesus, they don't even know who I am. They don't know who I am. And I, I was so devastated by that that my whole family didn't know who I was. And so I ran right into Jesus' arms, I really did. And um, so anyway, something happened. And it was like there was, you know, I had chains that I didn't realize that I had. I was, I was in, in bondage, but I didn't know that I was, you know, until 2012. And all of a sudden, um, things that would trigger me were no longer triggering me. And the freedom in that in itself was just amazing, amazing. So to this day, things that used to trigger me are dead. They're at the cross. They're, 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 it doesn't mean anything to me now. And this is the freedom. This is the liberty that he talks of. Okay? And this reminds me of uh, a verse. Um, and it's Gal uh, Galatians 5. This I say then, walk, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know, um, that wasn't it. <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't it. This is it here, Galatians 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty which wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled with the yoke of bondage. And like I say, I felt so free for the first time in my life when I experienced that where nothing was affecting me that usually would have just went right through my heart. I would have went down on the ground on my knees just because of these things that would be said or done towards me. And it was gone. I was completely free. I was free in liberty. And again, I would not go back to those bondage. Now, there's bondage, too, that's also very physical, where it's smoking and drinking and, and this sort of thing. And this is something that we have to, to understand, that this is the sacrifice, the living sacrifice of the body that we are putting on the altar. And that altar is sanctifying the sacrifice. So you have to ask yourself, how far have I come so... Um, as far as putting things down and putting it at the cross and, and uh, you know, um, sanctifying the body. See, because we too have to, to work on this. I mean, when it came to the cigarette and the drink with me, it was all God. It was all God who did this. I, I do not take the glory. I do not take the credit for this. But what I did was I followed spirit. And again, when I opened up that, that fridge to open up that beer, I just looked at it and closed the door because I knew, I knew if I continued to do what I was doing with that beer and going after that beer, God would have said, okay, fine, you want the beer, take the beer, you know? But I knew for a fact that it was his will for me. It was his will. And I wasn't going to go up against that. So I closed that fridge and never opened up another beer, nor did I ever drink again. So, and it's been over a year now. Now... Um, this is where, you know, the bondage that we, you know, as Christian, as, as God's children, walking in faith, there's some that just don't believe that, you know, they believe that they're in bondage. I mean, they've got religion, they've got rules, regulations, do this, do that, don't do this, pray to this one, pray to that one, bow down here, get, stand back up and, you know, this is what you have to do in order to please. And, and it was just unbelievable when you, you think about the religion and how it covers the Bible. And I call the Bible my my love letter. I really do. It's a love letter. And and it's he's telling us how we're going to survive in these last days. It really is. So anyway, getting back to this, um, 
the captivity in the prison. So yes, I mean, this was all spiritual. This was something that I felt. This was something that was not seen or, or heard, but it was, an, it was a movement, okay? I'm just gonna switch over.